Hey everyone, this is Jason Stash Olson from Booker T's Reality of Wrestling, and you're listening to Houston Wrestling Radio with Avon Travis. Hey there, this is Tex Lone Star from Doomsday Wrestling. And this is Dr. Sons, yeah. And you are listening to Houston Wrestling Radio with Travis and Avon. <laughs> this is Rocky Star Robbie Gilmore, Booker T's Reality of Wrestling, and you are listening to Houston Wrestling Radio. Hello and welcome everyone to another edition of Houston Wrestling Radio. This is Abel. And this is Travis. And perhaps you are listening on our website, HoustonWrestlingRadio.com. Perhaps you are joining us on YouTube. And hey, we're also on iTunes now, folks. So uh, if you're listening to one, hey, you can listen to any of the others. Also check us out on Twitter. Our Twitter handle is at HWrestlingRadio. And you can also check out our Facebook account. Facebook.com slash Houston Wrestling Radio. And hey, uh, guess what, Trav? What's that? Uh, we got a pretty good show lined up for today. Oh, don't lie to these people. <laughs> yeah, it's the same joke every week with you. Hey, <laughs> until I see improvement. <laughs> oh, 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 excuse me, sir. <laughs> the boss over here needs to see improvement. Yeah, well, someone's got to do quality control around here. Is it because you're the white guy? Yeah. Sure. Okay, not? I will say that that's why. Get back See, to work. El jefe over here. Get back to work. El patron. Mm-hmm. See. Uh, anyway, <laughs> here's why we're going to have a good show. Oh, would you say? <laughs> we are going to have none this other. This is America. Shut up. Oh, okay. Try and get on. Yeah. Okay, we are going to have none other than the most over ref in the business from Booker T's ROW, Jason the Stash Olsen. So that uh, that should be interesting. There, he started doing the the yogas, the the DDP yoga stuff. You know, talk to him a little bit about that. Uh, also, you know, about refereeing and whatnot. And then, hey, we also went to ROW uh, this past weekend, and that was a really good show. We'll yep. get to that later. We also had a pretty interesting episode of Raw. I don't know if I want to say it was good, <laughs> um, but I don't want to say it's bad either. It was and interesting. It was interesting, interesting. And hey, we also had a Pretty interesting uh, pay-per-view in lockdown. Uh, Wait, what? It's a pay-per-view. We had an interesting TNA pay-per-view? Yes, we did. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Well, I, well, I, I think so. Again, the, the, the word is interesting. Okay. Yeah. You want, are we talking about that? What's going on? Uh, I don't know. I mean, I see... We're going to have a lot of stuff on our plate here this week on both, on both WWE I don't and know TNA. if we can do all this in an hour and a half. <laughs> is that a warning? Sure. Okay. Don't do this in your lunch break. Okay. <laughs> or or do it on your lunch break on Monday and Tuesday. Or yeah. Well, no. We, we'll space we, it up for the whole week. Yeah. You, know? yeah, you can yeah. listen to our whole show all yeah. week long. There and you then go. you'll be ready for the next episode. Yes. <laughs> See, we do this on purpose. It's a method to our madness. <laughs> I'm not sure if that's the method. Anyway, uh, let, let's start talking. Hey, as long here. as you're listening. Yes. As long as... <laughs> that's that's yeah. That's the that's the goal. That's the key. Yes. Yeah. yeah. All right. Do you want to start with Impact or do you want to start with WWE? Um, let's go with Impact. Impact, really? Yeah. Okay, again, two weeks in a row we're starting with Impact. Hey, they had know. they had a pay-per-view. Yes, they did have a pay-per-view. I think that takes uh, prominence, right? Uh, well, well, hold on. Hold okay. On. Let's, let's not jump to the pay-per-view quite yet because yeah. we do need to talk a little bit about uh, Impact itself. Okay, so Impact started up and, you know, coming from the last week's episode, mm-hmm. uh, you know, Kurt Angle made this big discovery. Yes. He knows who the VP is. Uh-huh. So you think that Impact would open up with Kurt Angle coming out and saying, hey, I know who the VP is. Because he didn't go on Twitter or anything to announce it. He wanted to wait for a full week before he announced anything. Right. He didn't want to tell anybody. Yeah, no. Because right. he's a jerk. Right. Unless he's listening, then he's not a jerk. Yeah, he's not a jerk. He's a great guy. Yeah, come on our show. Yes. So, anyway, uh, so, yeah, we, uh, we're we waiting for him to show up, but in the meantime, uh, what do we have, Austin Aries? He's, yeah. He's coming out, and he's challenging Jeff Hardy. Right. He says, you know, why does Bully Ray get a title shot? Mm-hmm. Other than marrying the boss's daughter. So, uh, Jeff Hardy comes out. Yeah. So, whatever. Fast forward a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> it's Austin Aries. Come well, on, man. yeah, yeah. okay. It's Austin Aries. Yeah. Yes, Austin Aries is my boy. Yeah. But I, I think the point that that we want to get to here is that after that whole thing with Hardy and Aries, All right, yeah. Then there was a thing with, um, you know, Team T and A <laughs> trying to hype each other the, up. The, the pep talk. Yeah, the little pep talk. Why are you doing the pep talk? Why shouldn't you still be concerned with the big reveal of who the VP was? Maybe they weren't watching the show. They weren't watching last week. They they don't know that Kurt knew. Maybe not. 
We don't. Hmm. Apparently not. Okay. It's kind of weird that they were doing a pep talk like three days before the show, before the pay per view. Well, I mean, I don't have a big problem with that. I we're mean, pepping you up. Stay pepped for three days. <laughs> <laughs> well, when when are they when are they going to do it that we'll be able to see it on TV? At the pay per view. At the pay per view, they're getting a pep talk. Wait, yeah. What? Yeah, game day. Yeah, that's when you're going to do your pep talk. Uh, okay, I could buy that. It's a sports thing. Well, well I'll, I'll explain it to you later. <laughs> oh, don't act like you're the sports guy. This, you know, you're like 72 pounds soaking wet, pasty white guy here. <laughs> you really, well, do you really want to go into uh, physical attributes over here, Abel? <laughs> uh, no, let's let's leave it at that. <laughs> what was that? What? You changed the subject on uh, Yeah, okay. anyway, moving uh, okay. on to lockdown. Moving on? Okay, all right. <laughs> A jerk. I know, I'm a jerk. Moving on to lockdown, we had a pretty good match to kind of start off there. I think it's a match of the week candidate. We had Christian York versus Zima Ion versus K Squared. That's uh, Kenny King for those keeping score at home. Mm-hmm. In a triple threat X Division title match. I thought that was a pretty good match. I thought it was a great way to, you know, start off the paper. You have it early on. And the only complaint that I could really say is... Well, why are these three fighting? What happened to RVD? He just lost his title. Sure, and he got in a rematch. What's? It was kind of random. As does TNA do sometimes with their booking. Yeah. But uh, yeah, that was a very strange. If you're going to be trying to sell a pay per view, you think you'd want, I don't know, some kind of build up, yeah, something, you know, explaining why they're they're fighting. Is yeah. It, is this so random thrown it, together? It, especially when these three guys could put could put on such a great match. And like I said, it's a match of the week candidate. I, I think the match was really good. There was a oh, go ahead. There was a, a couple scary spots in that match though. The, yes, that I was going to get to my butt. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know. And that's a big butt. Oh now, okay, now you got your little revenge. I there. got my receipt. Yes, okay, okay so, there you go. Um but yeah, there was that little spot with the uh, uh little Kenny King there. Yeah, which if it was pulled off, in theory that match there, that spot could have been awesome, where he was bouncing off of Zima Ion's back, doing a flip, and then landing on Christian York. The, I don't know if it's that he didn't get enough spring off of Zima Ion, or if Christian York was out of place. But either way, K squared went head first. I'm gonna say he slipped it, on the hairspray. He's <laughs> yeah, too much hairspray, and it dripped down on his back. You know, because he's spraying his head up, and I think this sweat and everything just kind of run down his back and. And it just makes a yeah, no sweat. traction, no traction at all. That's what I'm saying. Okay, so it was Zimarion's fault. Yeah. True. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. I was leaning more towards Christian York being out of position. <laughs> well, if that's the case, you can say well, it was Kenny King's fault for uh, not aiming correctly. <laughs> so let's just say it's everybody's well, fault. Well, throughout the whole match, it seemed as though Christian York was a half step behind. Uh, until maybe like halfway through the match, like maybe he needed to get warmed up or something. I, I don't know. And that seems to be a recurring theme in Christian York's we've heard matches. That, we've had that criticism of before. Yeah. You know, we've said that about him before. Yeah. I mean, I really like him, and I like the things that he does in theory. <laughs> like, the moves that he pulls off, if he was able to pull it off uh, within... Seamlessly. Seamlessly, yeah. that would have been a great move. That would have been a brilliant spot. But he's, he's always like a half step yeah. too slow. But despite that, despite that, Kenny King... And Zima Ion were able to pick up the slack on that. Eventually, Christian York came around, and they put on a hell of a good match. A classic X-Division style match. And you know me, I'm a mark for the X-Division. I wish that the X-Division, I'll say it again, was more prominent in TNA programming. So when I see a good X-Division match, I pop. So, Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> Abel. I'm, I'm using insider lingo. <laughs> Is that what you're doing? Yes. Um, Calm down over there, big fella. <laughs> okay, so we have several other Match of the Week candidates that we'll get through throughout the show. So this week, we're definitely going to want to hear your guys' input on this as to what should be Match of the Week. Because there's just so many that are out there. This is not my pick, but it's one of the picks that are out there. So listeners, chime in, tweet us, Facebook us, hell, even send us an email, HoustonWrestlingRadio at gmail.com. Ooh, I forgot we had that. Yeah, we have one of those. Yeah, who'd have thunk it? Okay. (laughs) We're like professionals and whatnot. (laughs) Now, let's move on to the next match that is another match of the week candidate. Okay. That 
I think it is my pick for match of the week. This is my pick. You think so? Yeah, I think so. It was the Mexicans <laughs> versus Bad Influence <laughs> versus Rudy Neris. You didn't say that. I did say that. They're Tell Mexicans. me you didn't say that. They're yeah. Mexicans. Ch- Chavo and Hernandez. Yeah. Ch- Chavo Guerrero and right. so-and-so Hernandez. What's what's Hernandez's first name? Don't they call him Sean? Is it, is it Sean? I think it's Sean. That's what Bad Influence calls him. Yeah. I don't know if he's being a smart-ass or what, but no, that's... that's I don't know. Whatever. Hernandez. The Mexicans. <laughs> it's okay. I'm Mexican. I can say it. I can say it too? No, you know, you're a ginger. Oh, okay. You can't say it. Damn. So what do I call him? You just call him Chavo and Hernandez. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> anyway. What about Primo and Epico? Can I, can I call them the Puerto Ricans? You can call them the Puerto Ricans. Oh, okay. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Thank you, sir. There's there's your solace right there. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Damn good match. Again. Uh, I thought there was a lot of really great spots in it, a lot of back and forth, especially between the the two heels, you know, Bad Influence and uh, Aries and Rude, the two heel teams rather. I, I just thought it was it was really good, especially seeing those four interact. And then when uh, Hernandez and Chavo got in there and they started doing all of their moves, and it seemed like everybody had a good five minutes where they were the ones that were dominating the match. So they were really passing passing around the. The, yeah. the suplexes? Yeah. Yeah. And then, <laughs> oh my God, that spot with all those suplexes. It was like the 15 amigos. I don't know how many there were. It was a lot, you know. Was, and then passing off on who was doing the suplexes, you know. Yeah. It, it was, that was really good. That was a really good spot. There was uh, one thing when we were watching this, I was, I, I mentioned this uh, as an observation for uh, Daniels. This is probably the most personality I re- ever recall seen out of Daniels. Yeah. He's like really just coming out of his shell. I don't know if it's because he's working with Kaz and they're just a really, they just have that really good chemistry or yeah. if, I don't know what's going on with Daniels, but I think this is the best he's, I, I remember seeing as far as character wise. Yes. You know, he's just kind of letting himself loose there and it's, it's far more entertaining. Yeah. I wonder if it's like, this is my final hurrah. I don't really care I, I anymore. I was thinking that, yeah. Yeah, I don't really care anymore. Whatever. I'm just going to have fun. And yeah. it's like so working. Like he should have been doing that his whole career. I mean, not not saying that he's yeah. been a bad wrestler. He's been an amazing wrestler oh, yeah, throughout yeah. the years. It's just that he never had that certain pop to his character. And now he does. He has that extra little, uh, I don't know what you would call it, an extra little something, something. And personality. He, per, yeah, okay, personality. Let's call it personality. <laughs> Uh, well, charisma. Charisma, yeah. yes. Well, it's not to say that he didn't have personality or charisma before. He did, but this is just... He, well, he had, a cool, so. he had a cool gimmick yeah. earlier, but the gimmick didn't really... It's not really charismatic, you know? It's just, yeah. He just came out with the... He was the fallen angel. Yeah, he, it was a really cool gimmick. I it mean, was. The fallen angel, yeah, all that stuff. You know, it was really, really badass, but he didn't really have speaking skills. I, you know... Mike skills. I mean, maybe he's just learned it over the years or something. Maybe. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe he's always had his never really cared to share it. I don't hmm. know. Either way, all the stuff before the match, uh, you know, with the interviews and whatnot and everybody talking smack. And then in the match when, uh, you know, Bad Influence and Rudy and Aries are interacting, I, I thought it was just really great. And I like the way the match ended mm-hmm. where it was both of the guys of the team in there, you know, one's yeah. doing the pin, the other's playing, you know, yeah. a guard or whatever yeah. in case somebody else tries to break up the pin. I really like that because uh, I think it adds a lot of psychology to the end of a, a end of a tag team. It's match. a tag team match, and the tag team partner is protecting the, the, the protecting tag. the pin. Yeah, yeah exactly. So I, I really liked it. I think that's all I'm going to say about that for right now. Again, okay. listeners, right. chime in, let us know. That's my personal pick. Uh, Trav, is that your pick, or have we yet to get to your pick? You know, I'll, I'll figure it out before the show's over. Okay, that's fine. We'll re- we'll revisit that. <laughs> okay, uh, let let's talk about the lethal lockdown match itself. Do, do we have to? Yes, we have to. Ugh. Mostly because it's a lethal lockdown, the signature match of lockdown, and B, it's involving the biggest storyline in TNA right now. TNA and okay. the Aces and Eights. We'll talk about it. TNA one. <laughs> that's it. That's it. That's all you want to say. TNA won. Whatever. It wasn't, I wasn't impressed with that match. You know what? I, you are correct. I wasn't impressed with that match either. It felt like all the way up until the very end when there was that super tower of doom. Like before that spot. Yeah. Everything kind of felt like the middle of the Royal Rumble. And, yeah. Okay. You know, maybe you know, 
I love the Royal Rumble. I've been on record saying that I love the Royal Rumble. But there are... And the Royal Rumble loves you. Yes. And there are times during the Royal Rumble where everybody's in there, they're kind of waiting for the next spot, and they're just kind of all kind of playing patty cake with each other in the corner. And, like, that's it. Yeah. And that's kind of how this felt until they finally got everybody in the match. Oh, everybody's finally there. Okay, great. Now what are we going to do? Weapons. Okay, weapons. And then... Team TNA knocks out everybody. And then the Aces and Eights on cue all get up at the same time. <laughs> that was ridiculous. And no sell. They freaking yeah. no sell. It's like, okay, we're recovered. Let's whack all the TNA guys with weapons. All right. It's that a was, miracle. Yeah. It was, that was ridiculous. And something that could have been awesome were, with them, with the Team TNA knocking out everybody. Like, that could have been great if they started, you know, really getting the upper hand or maybe pinning them then and there. No, the Aces and Eights had to get up, no sell, and whack them back. <laughs> and then the Super Tower of Doom, which could have been a really cool spot. I guess it was, but I'm like, eh, I don't know. Like, maybe because there already was one earlier in the TNA likes TNA likes their Towers of Doom. I'll give them that much. They do. They really do. And that was a cool Tower of Doom. I mean, it was a lot of them, but... I don't know, maybe it was too much Tower okay, of Doom. We saw one earlier in the show. We saw a, a tease for another one during the six-man, or the, the three, three team. We saw a tease of that, and then we had the, the super... So there was like a, a setup for it like three times during the, the pay-per-view. Yeah. A little, too little much, much. Too much Doom. Yeah. yeah. Too, too much Doom. <laughs> so, eh, whatever. And then finally, Team TNA wins. Right. After um, Showtime jumps off of the top of the cage... Which could have been even more awesome, but he didn't really jump. He kind of fell. Well, it, it was a it was a cool spot, to, but it was just it felt like it wasn't enough. It was yeah, a, you know, maybe I'm just like maybe there should have been like a series of finishers on the guy. That's but, maybe, but there wasn't. There, I think it was just a scorpion death drop. I could be wrong. Yeah, I think it, I like, think Sting just did the drop, and then, and then and then he signaled for Showtime to go up to the cage. No, he was going to do it from the top rope, and then he and said, like, no, 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 that's not, that's not enough. Get your ass up the top of the cage. Which was all oh, cool, but I think before then, they could have done a la Nexus style, where everybody hits their finisher on the one guy, yeah. and then the big top rope move. Yeah. And, and then it could have been... I think maybe that would have been a little bit better, because it was kind of like, okay, cool, is about to do this thing. Oh, wait, that's the three count? Oh, okay. What did it, you know, I'm just I'm talking about this right now, I'm just thinking, what that whole match, the whole problem with that match was, is lazy booking. You think it was that lazy? Yeah, we, you know, Sting coming out with all the weapons, and then Team... Team A knocks out all of A's and A's at the same time, and then A's and A's at the same time recovers and starts beating them down. Yeah. And, you know, it was very... You could just see the, the guys in the back, okay, here's what we're going to do. <laughs> yeah. It's like, you get yeah. in yours, we'll get in yeah. ours. Yeah. That way it's all balanced. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. And, and let's just know. finish off an elbow drop off the top of the cage. Yeah. Had Team TNA obliterated the A's and A's team, then it would have been better for going into Jeff Hardy versus Bully Ray because we would have really felt and thought, okay, Team TNA, TNA is on top of the mountain. They've destroyed the Aces and Eights. The Aces and Eights problem has gone away. Right. And the uh, stuff at the end would have been even more shocking. But it wasn't. They, they decided to go with the balance route. And, meh, I don't know if I was, I don't know if I'm down with that. Okay, so you're not down with uh, TNA winning. The, uh, no, no, the I'm done with them winning. Okay. I'm just not down with them not winning with dominance. Like, oh, okay. Yeah. They yeah. fucking kicked their ass. Like, that didn't happen. It's like, okay, they, they barely squeaked one out, and yay, EY did something really cool, and like, that's it. Why was... Nothing nothing against uh, Eric Young. Yeah. Why did he get the last Why one? was Why was Sting making the big deal about Eric Young? I don't know. I mean... EY is not as over as he has been, but that's mostly because he's, he's, he's been, been gone. There. Yeah, he's been gone. Yeah, he's yeah. been gone. And maybe they were banking on the fact that he's back and, oh, people still love EY, which we do. I still love EY. That's what I'm saying. Nothing, nothing against him or his, his, his character or, his, yeah. or the way he wrestles or anything. But, but right now, his stock isn't as high as it has been. Yeah. And I think they were thinking that his stock was still as high as it was before he left, but eh, not so much. Like, I would have rather seen Joe get the pin. You know, yeah. Or if you or really Joe do something there at the end again, going back to if yeah. everybody hit their finishers, yeah. you know, or you know they're trying to push, you know, maybe Magnus as a, a bigger star, he could have got the win. Yeah, something, you know. But it, hey, speaking of Eric Young, is he still the knockout 
tag team. I believe so. Yes. Okay. I believe so. <laughs> I really don't. <laughs> I don't give two shits about yeah. that title. I give, <laughs> apparently, neither is Dean. Yeah, I, I give one and a half shits about that title right now. That's that's uh one <laughs> that's one shit more than the the TV title. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, maybe I give one in three, four oh, shits okay. about the TV title. Oh, okay. Well, TNA doesn't. I mean, the Devon right. won it, and that was pretty much it. <laughs> right. You think that someone in TNA, maybe Kurt Angle or somebody, would say, "Hey, why do you have? I want that title back for TNA." The Aces and Eights have a title. Let's, yeah. Let's challenge. Yeah, for it. I know. Or at least Rude and Aries, who've been saying that, "Oh, we're going to win every title." Well, okay. Yeah, you got yeah. the tag title. Let's uh, let's start moving on to the others. <laughs> Come on. And not to veer off or anything too much, but that was one of the things where I was uh, mentioned after they won their match, with being the tag team champions. Yeah. Also, you know, Aries and uh, Rude was, uh, it's great they won. They're great as a tag team. Oh, they're awesome. But where do they go? You know, there's, these are, True. these are their main eventers for TNA. Yes. And they're stuck as a tag team. Right. Maybe they'll continue with that. Plan about trying to win all these other titles, even though they. But they have. haven't really. They haven't even mentioned that in the last couple. Of t- oh, I know. That was one WTF moment. Okay, WTF moment of the week. Yes, Austin Aries pre-match interview. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're talking to him about where's Robert Roode been for these past two weeks, <laughs> and he's talking about, oh, I don't need Roode. I can do this up by myself. But for those who are new, you know wondering about if he's going to be here. I don't have to worry about that. He's right here. Yeah. And he comes out and he's like, you know, he just looks at the like, cameras. Hi. I'm here. It's like, what the hell was the point of all that? Yeah, what was the point of having him gone? What was the point of even mentioning the fact that he's been gone for two weeks? Yeah. If there wasn't anything, like, sh- shenanigans or something that was... Do you think that maybe just for some backstage type of thing, or maybe something personal for him, like he had to go... Take care of something, or it could know, be. You know, but then, why even make a point fa- of it? Family member was in the, yeah, exactly. Family member was in the hospital or something like. So he was off a of TV or off a of taping for you know something like that. But maybe that's all it was. But again, like you said, if that's what it was, why even mention it? Just why make of, because the way they were presenting it, it was acting like like it was an angle, like it was a thing, like this is gonna be okay. He's been gone for two weeks because he's been with Ace and Nate or something, you know, or yeah. some kind of weird thing was going on. You know, he's mysteriously disappeared for two weeks. We don't know. Kind of like D'Lo Brown disappeared for... Oh, yes. Oh, how, why? <laughs> why? <laughs> why D'Lo is... <sighs> the VP? D'Lo's the VP. Why is D'Lo the VP? <laughs> because he used to work for WWE. Oh, that's why. Okay. <laughs> that's my theory. You know what? Let, let's let's gloss over D'Lo and just get to the, the P. Not the VP. Let's get to the P, okay? Okay. Let's get to Bully Ray versus Hardy. You were saying all throughout the show, man, I can't wait for Bully Ray's heel turn. And then, <laughs> here you go. <laughs> I am so glad. Let me let me say this. I'm so glad a couple weeks ago I mentioned that on our show. You did. That I was, I, I got a feeling that Bully Ray is actually doing something with Aces and Eights because he's too goody-goody. Yeah. He's too lovey-dovey. Yeah. You know, all of a sudden. Mm-hmm. You know, and it wasn't even believable for his character. And, um, yeah, so you called it, so. I called it. I said the only thing that threw me off was the fact that he was actually beating up on Ace and Ace for a while in that tag match. You so know? are you, uh, ready to pull a Barry Horowitz and just pat yourself on the back there? Oh, I did that on Sunday. <laughs> I'll do it again. There you go. That's the sound of Charles patting himself on the back. Oh, he might want that at that. I didn't sound too good. I'm thinking about that. <laughs> <laughs> that sounded like something else. <laughs> do it again, do it again. <laughs> I swear to you, that's Travis patting himself on the back, and that's it. <laughs> oh boy. Okay, let, let's move on. Um, whew, I'm tired. <laughs> where's the napkins? Uh, <laughs> why do you do that when we're talking about Jeff Hardy? Oh, <laughs> oh come on Okay, uh, so the Jeff Hardy match. Bully Ray heel turn. We already hit on that. L- let's talk a little bit before we move on and talk about more aces and eight stuff. Hardy was concussed at the the power bomb, which I you know I thought that was a pretty good power bomb. Yeah. Um, and apparently it was good enough that it concussed Hardy. <laughs> well, we shouldn't make light of a wrestler's injury uh, during a match. It's, uh, oh god, that's not very. Uh, oh, yeah. oh really? Is yeah. so that that what we're doing now? Yes, this yeah. is my similar voice. Oh. Yes. So, uh, Speak yeah. Speak up, man. <clears throat> Jeff Hardy is concussed. Yes, he is concussed. It's not a laughing matter. 
Oh, Jesus. Okay. <laughs> You're an ass. <laughs> anyway, Jeff Hardy's concussed. It was pretty sick looking, the power bomb itself. I thought it was a pretty nice I, spot. You know, looking at it, that's what got it. If that's what got the concussion, I, I wouldn't think so. It just yeah. It didn't look like it hit his head or maybe got whiplash or something. It, it looked to me like he landed more on his shoulders, yeah. but more so than what you should, you know. You're supposed to land completely on your back and shoulders, not just shoulders. But either way, it was still kind of like, oh, that's where he got hurt. Oh, okay. Uh, you know, we kind of watched it late, you know, so we already heard that he was injured and that mm-hmm. he was concussed. But we purposely didn't see maybe, oh, how oh, it was. Maybe you know. he got concussed by the cameraman. <laughs> <laughs> because this dumbass... Walked uh, into just... a camera. <laughs> Dude, if you're starting... Okay... The joke was, okay, it was cool the first time you did it, but doing it every freaking week with the whole eyelids painted as your eyeballs, whatever. And then yeah. not, and, and then walking around with your eyes closed because you got eyeballs in your eyelids. <laughs> it was bound to happen, dude. Yes, I'm surprised it took him this long. I was waiting for him to trip or something. Yes. <laughs> or run into a fan or something. Yeah, know. that's what I was expecting more, for him to run into some overzealous fan who's like trying to hug him or make out with him or something stupid like that. Yeah. And he just walks right on into him. But no, instead we got something a lot better, which is him just walking into the cameraman. I want to see like the, the camera view, you know, like the cameraman's... Well, the cameraman wasn't looking at him. The cameraman was turned looking, pointing at the audience. And that's when he just walked up and so the cameraman didn't know he was coming. Right. You know, he was turned away. <laughs> Silly cameraman. He was thinking Jeff already had his eyes open. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it was kind of the fault of both the cameraman and Jeff Hardy. You know, but Maybe. whatever. It was still funny. I blame Hardy. <laughs> Take him blame the cameraman for getting for Hardy walking into him. <laughs> because he wasn't where he was supposed to be. He's a cameraman. He was filming the freaking audience. Yeah, okay, whatever. Jeez. Okay, look enough Hardy talk. He lost. He'll turn for Bully Ray. Uh, yeah, with the yay. ball peen hammer. With the ball peen hammer. Hit him in the back of the head with a hammer. Concussion. And, <laughs> that wasn't the concussion. <laughs> uh, and then we got, you know, him on the mic doing what he does best. You know, back, it felt like he was back in his ECW yeah. days. Yeah. You know, just talking crap to people in the audience, talking crap to, you know, people at ringside. They happened to be in the cage, so it was awesome. He was able to get into Hogan's face and Brooke's face without having any repercussions. Yeah. That yes. was, I think that was brilliant, you know, yeah. um, saying, uh, what did he say? I used you mm. and I screwed yeah. you. That was great. That was that's not, awesome. That's not PG. No, that's not PG. <laughs> and uh, then people start throwing trash in, in the ring, which that was kind of cool until... We read later on that that was maybe plants in the audience. Well, even not reading it, I mean, you could tell. I mean, it was just spontaneous. All of a sudden, tra- At trash. The same time. Yeah, trash flying in from all directions. Yeah, it's like all the it's like all the crowd like, hey, he did something bad. You wanna you wanna throw something at him? Yeah. You wanna you wanna, you wanna throw something at him? Okay, everybody on the count of three, let's all let's all throw something at him. Yeah, and I think another shred of evidence that proves that. That wasn't like a genuine, we're so bad and we're tossing, you know, trash in the ring was that the actual immediate reaction to the, to the heel turd. It was, it, at least it seemed on our TV that it was crickets, <laughs> like more of what, what just happened? Like people confused, like why police in the, uh, ooh, okay. And like that kind of thing happened. Whereas TNA would have led you to believe like, the audience was like, oh my god, he did a rabble, rabble, throw trash. You know, and that's not really how the crowd was feeling. Not saying that's a bad reaction, you know, because they were shocked. That's yeah, that's did, a good reaction. I did hear the rabble, rabble chant, by the way. Oh, did you? Yeah. I don't yeah. know if you heard it. You know. that, that was the plants. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let me ask you something. Do you think that ever since the beginning of the East of Saint storyline, that they have been planning this all along? And they, by they, I mean TNA creative. Right. I'm going to say yes. Yes. And I'm going to say that. I'm not going to say from the very beginning, but this has definitely been planned. Okay. Ahead of time. Because of the whole Bully Ray. Yeah. Going back to whenever they brought Brooke in. Mm-hmm. And then he started, they started hanging out in the office, you know, and he was... You know, it was very fast paced. We even said that, you know, oh, they, this been going out for a couple of weeks and they're getting married. What the WTF, yeah. you know? 
So that was that could have been spread out a little bit longer, but I do feel that once they started up that angle right there, that was them saying, "Okay, we're gonna. This is gonna kind of lead into okay that." I I feel a little bit like this whole thing with Bully Ray and this uh, uh part of the Aces and Eights was kind of thought up by by Teeny Creative. Um, Kind of That's around, what they do, yes. Shut up. <laughs> kind of around the time when there was the match where if Aces and Eights win, they get access to the Impact Zone. If they lose, they're banished from the Impact Zone. Mm-hmm. I think that what happened was that there was somebody in TNA Creative that had this idea and then it kind of ran out of steam. And we're like, okay, well, we're just going to have this match where they lose, they go away, the end. And then someone else, some other person on the creative team or something came in and said, hey, no, l- let's not scrap this idea. Let's do it this way. And then that dude, like, took over the booking. Because it feels as though there's been two aces and eights. It's like it started you know? out differently. Yeah, it started out differently. It had what would have been the climax and the end. And that was just, like, a beginning of a new version of the aces and eights. But still masquerading around as the same aces and eights, you know? And, right. There's and, two different Ace and Eights. There's the mask ones. Yeah. And that storyline kind of faded out. Yeah. And then there was the where they were actual biker gang dudes, and yeah. you didn't really know what they wanted. They weren't wrestlers. They were, yeah. you know, just invading for the sake of invading. And and like that was very all directionless. Well very, very directionless. I yeah. And, and that was like, well, we're gonna have them stay out by getting cops involved and getting realistic and, and doing these type of real life things and Hogan's running around the impact zone telling cops what to do and that kind of stupid shit. And then after all that was like, okay, we kind of painted ourselves into a corner. Uh, let's just get rid of it. And somebody else was like, no, no, no. Let me take the reins of this storyline. And that's when the storyline went in a completely different direction. And they said, hey, let's just start unveiling people. Oh, let's just say that, uh, you know, D'Lo was in it, and Devon, and Bully Ray, and Taz, and they were behind it since the beginning, and then, you know, and now they are wrestlers. They're, they're disgruntled wrestlers, in fact. Cause I don't really feel like a faction of disgruntled wrestlers would start being a biker game. Yeah. At the very beginning, that's what they were. They were just a biker gang. A bunch of thugs that didn't have a vendetta. They were just biker gang thugs who wanted to cause havoc, you know? And then there was that, that point where it was, oh no, we're disgruntled ex-employees of TNA. You know? Yeah, it's kind of like, the, 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 yeah, like you were saying, the first one was just mass bikers. Yeah. Kind of roaming around. And that didn't really go anywhere. So this new one, this with without the masks or anything, this is more like this is really more. And I hate to say it because it's so cliche. NWO, definitely. <laughs> and if it wasn't the intent before, it is now. Yeah, they. I think Taz was even saying, "Oh, this is a new world. This is a new world we're in." Yeah, and he said it a couple it's, times. It's, yeah, he said that towards the end there after everybody, after bully was yeah after and the, everybody was thrown in trash. He was saying that this is a new order. It was a pay per view that involved Hogan. Yeah, um, there was a there was a uh, heel turn, you know, and there was trash being thrown in the ring. So you can't deny there's definite connections to the NWO storyline. Yeah, you know, but I don't know. I guess now their 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 purpose Aces and Aces purpose now is to just take over TNA. I guess so. With him, because that's the whole thing I was alluding to was with Bully marrying Brooke. Yeah. You know, that's him. You know what I was surprised of? I'm, I'm sorry, I don't mean to interrupt no, you, but I was surprised that, that Brooke was not in on it. You think that, so? That she was fooled too. Like, like a I, Stephanie? Yeah. I, I would have definitely thought she would have been, you know, like that, like a Stephanie where it's like, oh, I was in on it too, you know, and she's turning on her dad and everything. Well, we're not I, there yet. You, it you just think ha- that could still happen? It just happened. Okay. You know, who's to say it won't, you know? Mm, okay. But maybe they, maybe they don't, they, they don't want to follow exactly the Triple H Stephanie storyline. <laughs> you know? Well, they're following the NWO storyline yeah. pretty closely. How many, how many storylines can they tie in on? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. All that being said, is the Aces and Eight storyline now good, bad, ugly, indifferent, oh, geez, that's whatever? That's a hard one, man. Oh. At least they're going somewhere with it now. Okay. And that's a better thing than what they were doing. Okay. <laughs> um, I want to say with Bully being the champ 
and with this whole story arc, I, I think it's it's kind of saved it a little bit. But I still want to see where they're going to go now. Yeah. You know, for right now, it's a tentative good with the possibility of it going south really fast. Like, they're, they're kind of really skating thin ice here. Like, it's starting to get thicker, the ice. <laughs> they're starting to be like, okay, there's this some is things good. coming together. Yeah, there's yeah, some things coming together, but, it, you know, it's... But if they start trying to be too NWO, then it's like, come on. But if they start... Trying to be like, okay, well, we're done. We have the title, and that well, we're me, happy. Let, then let me, let me stop you there. When you say two NWO, yeah, do you are you referring to like bringing in other members, like I, get it too big? Yeah, I mean, like the next TNA video game is going to be, you know, <laughs> Aces and Aids versus TNA, you know, revenge, revenge. <laughs> yeah, like once that happens, it's like no man. And if you start having like Aces and Aids red, no. <laughs> Dude, stop. You know, but, but they have they, a Latino biker, biker game coming in. Yeah. <laughs> they, they need to like tone them down, maybe, because right now yeah. they have the title. Oh, God. You know, and it feels as though almost half the roster is aces and eights, and now everybody's trying to fight against them. And uh, I don't know. I mean, it, it's going that way, but for right now, it's good. I don't know. And it was cool that at the end, whenever, uh, after the reveal. He did the whole uh, thing with Devon, their little yeah, uh, hint, whatever. That their little, little patty cake, patty yeah. cake thing, yeah. yeah. But then the camera cut off to it. Ah, uh, yes, that's that's a complaint I've had for TNA since day one. Their camera crew and their production value sometimes just drop the effing ball, man. Somebody's doing a signature pose or a really badass move. I remember the first time I've see I saw AJ Styles do the spiral tap. The first time I saw that, I didn't see that. (laughs) And neither did anybody else. (laughs) Right. It was like, oh, man, he's at the top of the rope. Okay, cool. What's he going to do? And then I see him doing this corkscrew flippy thing, and I never saw him land. And I'm like, what the fuck? What happened? He did such an awesome move. What was it? And I was, like, waiting intently to see uh, the replay. And guess what the replay was? What's that? From the exact same damn camera that they showed it originally. They didn't have another angle. They, they didn't show, okay, well, this was a bad angle. It happened like this. It didn't happen. It pissed me off so damn bad. And this was back in, like, 2006, seven, something like that, when I first started watching TNA and I first got into it. Yeah. And and I'm surprised that they haven't corrected that yet. Because that problem still it's, persists. It's not as bad as it was. Yeah. I'll give them that. But yeah, they do, every once in a while, they'll do stupid crap like... <laughs> yeah, they'll just cut away from yeah. like, you know... Because that that, that, awesome. that little something that Bully and Devon... First of all, that's something that the fans know. It, yeah. It connects them to Dudley's and Team 3D. But another thing, storyline-wise, is showing them that they're on the same page. Oh, yeah. You know, that they they knew about all this all along. Yeah, and they were you in know. on it. <laughs> yeah, so... Yeah. All right. Anything else we want to say about Impact before we wrap this up? Um... Not about the pay-per-view, but, you know, going into uh, this week, you know, last week's Impact, that was a final one from the Impact Zone. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, so going forward, we got it. They're in Chicago. They're going to be in Chicago. Yeah. I forget where they said they're going to be after that. And well, what happened to the whole Corpus Christi thing? Because remember a few weeks ago, we talked about them being at yeah, Corpus Christi? Be, yeah. Okay. It's in April. Oh, okay. Yeah. But uh, I think they said that uh, uh, AJ, he's going to be back. AJ Styles. He's yeah. going to make an appearance. Hopefully he found a razor. And, and some clean clothes. Yes. <laughs> and a new storyline and personality. Yes. But, hopefully he's yeah. not part of the Aces. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Yes. We need AJ to come back to fight Bully Ray and get back the title for Team TNA. There you go. But you can't fight for the title. Not, why? Not for that year until Bound for Glory. Oh, yeah. Remember that's what set him that's off? That's why. Yeah. So, no. No. That's another thing that TNA's kind of pinned themselves They the really court. fucked themselves in the butthole with that one. Yeah. <laughs> for lack of a better term, <laughs> for lack of a better term, yeah. So because that's that would have been, what you just said that would have been awesome. Yeah, a, you know AJ is for all intents and purposes their hometown, their their main AJ is the TNA, the guy. face of TNA. Yeah. yeah, whether you know it or not, because he's never on TV and they haven't been doing anything with him, he is Mister TNA. Yeah, he always will be. Yeah, and. What you just said, that would make sense because, yeah, he could just come back from this bad, you know, losing streak and his bad storylines yeah. and angles and he's always been And through. he'll get all this sympathy, sympathy pop from, like, oh, man, he's, yeah, he's going to fight back. And, and, yeah. And know, then, I was in a bad place, guys. I'm sorry. But, you know, I'm coming back and better and stronger than ever. Yeah. And boom. 
Yeah, he would do it with that that country accent of his. But yeah, yeah, still. But then, but he can't do that until Bound for Glory. And sure, they're not going to drag this oh, out. Bound for Glory. What October? Son of a bitch! They're not going to drag this out till then, are they? Uh, because who? That because, was a funny sound I just yeah, made. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so you have if this is going to be like an NWO type thing, who's going to be the, the savior? Guy? The savior. Don't be Sting. No, I'm tired of Sting being it. You know? They need a young TNA guy. Like AJ Styles. Like AJ Styles. <laughs> it can't be Sting. It can't be Kurt. Sting and Kurt could be like the backups, the the Herschel to their Rick. <laughs> <laughs> that was a Walking Dead reference, yes. people out there. Yes. yes. Like, like they should be the, the supporting cast there. You don't but think... somebody young who is TNA, like AJ Effin Styles, should be the guy that's like, I'm going to save TNA from the Aces and Eights. And TNA needs saving from the Aces and Eights. Because if not, they're going to go the way of NWO and it's just going to be ridiculous. Where yeah, NWO no one's going to fight them. It's gonna be, there's, no, there's not going to be... Yeah. The whole damn roster will be NWO. Yeah. yeah. And, and there's going to be Aces and Eights fights, fighting Aces and Eights. That, that is what was wrong with NWO. It right. just got too big, too right. out of control. And there was never that... Well, they're the heels. So in the end, they should lose. There was never that moment. You know, and and TNA skating that line, and they They're need to do that. Yeah. They, that if if Hogan and Bischoff and everybody from WCW never learned that lesson, then that's really sad. Yeah. Okay, now are we done with Impact Talk? <laughs> I was actually going to make a point. While you're Go ahead. Talking, no, but I, can, no, I can't make remember a point. what it is. I can't oh, remember what it is. You can't remember. Okay, yeah. good. Thanks to Travis' forgetfulness, <laughs> we're moving on to WWE finally. I'm old, folks. You gotta, you gotta forgive me. Okay, WWE. Uh, there was something interesting that happened on main event. Uh, Cesaro okay. took on Sin Cara and lost to Sin Cara. He lost clean to Sin Cara. Yeah, he lost clean to Sin Cara. But see, they didn't, they didn't talk about it on Raw. Yeah, we're SmackDown. I mean, if you had not known about it, you you wouldn't you, you wouldn't have known about but, it from anywhere else. And this is something that. I've noticed and I've thought about with the whole uh, Cesaro situation. Yes. There is a situation, by the way. Right. He's the U.S. champ. Mm -hmm. And up until a certain uh, swagger came came around, Cesaro had a really good gimmick going. Yeah. He wasn't, he had moved on from, I speak five languages. And he was very generic and everything, but now, I think he, he won the title, and he's very dominant as the champion, as yeah. the U.S. champion. And he was really taken a, akin to this this being the U.S. champ. Yeah. And uh, the whole USA, United States of Antonio, uh-huh. and carrying the U.S. flag. Does anybody notice he stopped doing that? Yeah, he doesn't have the flag anymore. And this this stopped up right after, I think, Elimination Chamber, right mm-hmm. when Swagger won. They dropped, it, it seems like to me, that they dropped... What was working for Cesaro because they didn't want to have two heels, kind of almost somewhat, with similar gimmicks. Yeah, doing the same thing, kind of, sort of, maybe. Well, I mean, hell, when when Swagger got busted with weed, the first guy that you had said, "Oh, we'll, we'll just replace it with Cesaro." Yeah, yeah, like, you know. I thought that would have been intriguing at the very least. Yeah, you know, but um, I, I just noticed that it was when on Raw. I didn't think much of it on Raw because it was old school. And yeah. you have this the plain tights. Yeah, and you saw the little pictures that they took back, you know, where yeah. he, he was doing an old school style pose. Yeah, and like that okay. was cool. Yeah. yeah, but I, I think that was a little bit of a a, a red herring there. It was, I think so because yeah. it, it's continued. He's he's gone on he's, from there. He, he lost. He still on doesn't it. have the flag. He still doesn't have the U.S. flag on his tights. He still doesn't yeah. call himself, you know, USA. He's and, not feeding you know, with that. anybody. Yeah, he's he's not doing nothing, you know. And this is the problem. This is a WWE problem where they have their U.S. champ not in a feud. Barrett, the Intercontinental champ, he's getting into a feud now on Raw, presumably. Presumably, but before that, he wasn't really doing anything until Bo Dallas came around from Royal Rumble, and then that got dropped. That was, and I think we mentioned this. That was a good opportunity for a one-two-three kid type situation. Yes, where they could instantly made that guy. Yeah, and they didn't. Mm-hmm. And now he's back in the locker room somewhere. But there's their, their they, they it seems like they don't know what to do with their their mid card champs. Yeah, and this is WrestleMania season. Yeah, if the mid card champs all year long are fumbled with, at least during WrestleMania season, at least pick up the ball and start doing exactly. something with your yeah. mid card champs. Right. But that's the exact 
opposite of what they're doing now. All year long, they've been kind of doing things with the IC and the US title until WrestleMania season. Oh, throw that shit on the back burner, which that is a travesty. And this also, actually, you're, you're probably going to be confused about this, but this is all Money in the Bank's fault. Mm. Because as soon as no, Money I in the can Bank, see where you're going with that. As soon as Money in the Bank started at WrestleMania, they've always had their Intercontinental Champ in that match. So they got lazy with Intercontinental yeah. the Champion, you know? Because usually the Intercontinental Champ is the more athletic, yeah. you know, guy who can do these, the workhorse. Yeah. But, uh, you know, I think in the past years, there's always like Shelton Benjamin. He was always the Intercontinental Champ. Yeah. You know, they always had, there was always some kind of champ in the Money to Make match, and that took away from any kind of feud they could have built yeah. with them. Yeah. I do remember that being disappointed that you know Jericho or whoever that had the IC title at the time. Oh well, that sucks. There's not going to be an IC title match because he's in Money in the Bank. Right. But Money in the Bank is yeah, awesome. Yeah, so, exactly. Yeah, you know I can see. Where it's like they dangle this nice little shiny candy in front of our eyes. It's like, don't worry about yeah. the don't worry about the title match. We got this nice pretty big match over here. You know, and going off of that, uh, I, I'll take it a step further by saying that the Money in the Bank briefcase itself. Is kind of more a prestigious title than having the Intercontinental. Or that's US a good titles. point. Yeah, that's a good point. Because yeah. you are presumably the heir to whatever title that you have. Right. That's kind yeah. of that's kind of replaced the Intercontinental title. Yeah. It's like <laughs> you're you the Money in the Bank holder are the number two guy in the company. Well, maybe they know that they're going to have a Money in the Bank match at WrestleMania, hmm. and they don't. They but, they'll just throw Cesaro and Barrett in there. Is there going to be a Money in the Bank? I don't I don't think so. I, they haven't really worked towards it yet. And you know what? Two podcasts ago, I said in two podcasts, if they don't have <laughs> the 80% of the uh, WrestleMania thing built up. And I said that wasn't going to happen. And you know what? You're right. And I am disappointed. It seems as though there's still a lot of question marks going into WrestleMania. Some things are forming together now, but not everything's not everything is there. There's, there's now, one particular match that's forming up, and uh, I don't know if it's going to wait till. Uh... Mania or not? Well, well, ho- hold on to that because I kind of want to go in order here. I mean, we already talked about the one thing that I wanted to mention for main event, which was Cesaro and Sicara, and that's probably all we're going to talk. Cesaro about. and Sicara, <laughs> yeah, uh, that's probably all we're going to talk about with Cesaro. But I-, I want to bring up something on SmackDown. Another match of the week candidate. We had Del Rio versus Ziggler again, again. But I don't mind Del Rio versus Ziggler again because. Holy crap, these two put on awesome matches. This is, like, what, the third or fourth time that I'm they've losing, had a match? I'm losing track how many times you're fighting each other. Well, it, you can still count it on one hand, so it's not like, you know, dozens and dozens yet. 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 Okay, I I see that look you have on your face. But this match, again, was freaking awesome. Uh, every time that Del Rio and Ziggler do that uh, inverted superplex, <laughs> it just seems to get better and better. And then when Del Rio was like jumping off of the, the top rope and then Ziggler just hit him, bam, with a drop kick, that just looked devastating. And it was great. It was fast paced, crisp, clean. I want to say that match was better than the X Division match at the pay per view. Now, I am not ready to say that is my pick for the match of the week, but that's another match of the week candidate and I want to throw down on there. Listeners, tell us what you think. Do you want to vote for that one? Or you know, am, are we crazy? Or in this case, am I crazy because Travis has given me this look like, no, that's not a match of the week. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm just getting tired of <laughs> saying Del Rio and Ziggler match of the week. <laughs> well, With I'm, the same outcome every time. That's true. Ziggler, it's not even, Ziggler's it's not, lost every time. It's not even him losing. It's him losing the same way. It, it's very formulatic. They're, they're getting outside interference. Yeah, but they're building on the formula, I think. And... As far as the interference goes, well, hey, you can't complain about AJ getting all wet. Yeah. I like when she gets wet. Hey. <laughs> hey you stop. Oh, oh sorry. <laughs> Don't pat yourself on the back again. I wasn't patting. <laughs> oh, geez, yes. We have a clean show here, people. Okay. Anything you want to say extra about that match? Or should we just move on to Raw? Um, uh, no, AJ got wet. Okay, so, uh, moving on to, uh... <laughs> moving on to Raw. Moving on to Raw. Uh, let's, let's start off with the big news, uh, from the week that's something that we didn't really get to talk about last week. Last week, we were doing the, the show with mm. Kid Ransom here. We all had our phones off, had a great time, awesome show. Thanks for coming on the show, Kid. It, we had a blast. 
after, once we saved our file and got ready to get everyone going home, we all busted out our cell phones and we looked at our phones and everybody's phone was blowing the F up mm. because... We lost a legend that night. We did. While we were over here doing our simple little podcast, Mm -hmm. Paul Bearer passed away. Yeah. That's, uh, that was pretty heavy, man. Uh, you know, I can't, I can't really say that there hasn't been another person that has really been like, oh man, that's a really big one since Macho, since Macho's died. You know? Yeah. Well, yeah. But it doesn't matter about how, how big it is or anything. It's just, you know, he's, you know, he's a, a beloved character. Right. You know, uh, I remember him, you know, I, when I got into wrestling, when I first started watching it, it was when Undertaker debuted. Mm. So it was just a few months later that Paul Bear came in. Yeah. You know, so he's been around ever since I've been watching wrestling. Yes. You know, and that's some of my earlier moments, fond memories, I guess you could say of him, was during the, the, the funeral parlor. Yeah. You know, Paul Bear's funeral parlor, and they would attack... Ultimate Warrior and Hogan. They would have their little caskets, little custom caskets. Yes. You know, uh, yeah, good times. So I think one of the first, like, dramatic angles they did was whenever they locked Ultimate Warrior in the casket. Remember that? Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah, good times. Good that, times. That's, uh, you know, what, what was, what was some of your, uh, Paul Bear moments that you, uh, oh, remember? man. Uh, I don't know why I'm bringing this up, but I kind of have to. <laughs> oh, jeez. Um, the concrete crypt match. Oh, are you serious? Yeah. <laughs> you are an it, ass. I, what? <laughs> I, I, that's like one of the first things I think Your about. Your memory think, of him is getting buried alive. Other than, <laughs> other than like all the generic, oh, yes, and him always coming out. Like a specific memory that I have of him that's not just one of those things is that concrete crypt match and be me being like what how are uh, I know this wasn't like way back in the day where you know I was still a kid or whatever it was like right. what how in the hell are they gonna pull this off and like this is gonna be so stupid why is Heyman pulling the thing I thought this was so dumb what was? but but then I was like wait a second they're really pouring, pouring concrete on this guy Wait, it's really getting on him. It's on his clothes. Wait, he's really in there. What the hell? How are they pulling this off? This is some some crazy shit that like how how are they actually doing this? This is like some it's magic all, it's magic all, greatest secret reveal type stuff. Like, what is going on here? You know? It's all CG, man. It wasn't CG. It was getting <laughs> on his clothes. It was staying in his clothes. You really like, don't know how to do that. How did they get? I I still to this day am not a hundred percent sure how they got away with it without actually killing him. <laughs> It was pre-filmed. So? What matters if it was pre-filmed? Well, <laughs> I'm not going to explain it to you right now. No, no, explain it. Explain it away, sir. The stuff that when it, he was actually getting buried alive yeah. was just being pre-filmed before the actual show. So whenever they could show him being filled up, yeah, that part was on the, the Titan Trons and everything. That's what everybody was seeing. Yeah. But what the audience saw in person was them like filling up about halfway. And then... It would cut to the, like the time tron, and then they would show the the pre film stuff. Really? So they yeah. didn't actually uh, bury him alive? No. Well, I figured that there was like maybe some sort of trap door underneath, no. and they did some because at the time that's when that show that I mentioned, Magic's Greatest Secrets Revealed, was like a thing, and I was like, wait, how did they pull that off? Like, because that thing was like freestanding. Like, well, I feel so sad now. I just ruined something for you. I ruined a childhood moment for you. <laughs> didn't ruin it it was like oh okay like but i was always like wow they really did this and i i kind of had a little bit of respect for paul bear at the time like oh man he was able to pull that off let's take one for the team man, man. He, he really held his breath for a long time <laughs> do they have like a, a scuba mask or something there in and with them what the hell how did they do it so okay <laughs> so yeah that was a good paul bear memory i had and of course again you know Tossed off the the side of the arena by what Ed. the hell? You remember all the stuff where he's getting killed on TV? I do, ladies and gentlemen. You can send all the hate mail to that. <laughs> that's a Houston Wrestling Radio at gmail dot com. Attention, ma- able. I'm not making fun of him. I'm just saying those are the things I remember. And then, of course, the last thing getting locked in the freezer. They killed him off so many times. He was like Kenny. I'm not saying that's a bad thing. I'm the not next thing, fun of the, guy. the next thing you're going to say is he's not really dead. Well. Oh my god. 
You think no. this is a work, don't you? No, well, there was, well, there, oh, was there was a slight <laughs> bit of hesitation on my behalf, thinking that maybe this is a work. You know, Undertaker just came back. They're doing this thing with CM Punk. But is this for real? Like, there, there was a moment where I was like, dude, this can't be real. This, this, this can't be right. And I'm not making fun of the guy. I'm not. I'm not trying to be funny. I mean, that's how I honestly felt for a moment. And then it was like, okay, well, maybe this. So for a split second, WWE got you fooled. They had you. Oh. For a split second, say it. They no, got not WWE. I would say maybe the dirt sheets. Because, you know, sometimes I'm like, well, maybe he's, maybe they're just saying that. Maybe it's a thing. Okay. <laughs> what difference does that make? Well, I'm just saying that I wasn't fooled by WWE. You say I wasn't getting fooled by WWE. And that's not the case. I was taking it kind of with uh, some speculation because, you know, it was all over from like dirt sheets. And so stuff basically, too. before WWE said anything about it, you saw it on one of the websites and he's like, oh, that's a work. I didn't say it like that. I was like, well, maybe this could be a work. Could it? Well, I mean, uh, obviously it turned out that it wasn't. As you know, as far as we know, it's not. You moved and, up. <laughs> Were you saying just a few episodes ago about Mark Maturity? <laughs> I'm going to throw that back in your face. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, I, I think that plays into some of the Mark Maturity there. Because it's like being skeptical of what it is that you hear and read and see. You know, it's like, well, you gotta take everything in this oh, world, geez. in the world of wrestling, with a grain of salt. Can we talk about Raw? <laughs> yes, we can talk about Raw. So anyway, <laughs> at the beginning of Raw, uh, people were talking about, you know, or not people, but they showed that vignette of, you know, Paul Bear and all the great moments that he had and whatnot. And then The Undertaker came out, wanted to pay his respects. And then CM Punk interrupted, and that, that was a really great <laughs> moment there. I know that people, there were some people that were out there like, oh, man, this is so offensive. And, you know, oh, they, it's like they're, they're really like trying to see how much of an asshole they can make CM Punk be. Right. Like, it was last week when he just interrupted the birthday and he just pushed Mae Young out of the way and Ernest just walked right through Mae Young's little birthday celebration. Yeah. That was kind of an asshole thing. To do. Yeah. It, it but was. this is like way above that. CM Punk. Yes. He's an <laughs> asshole. CM Punk. Yes, he is an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> and, um,. Were you surprised that the one that got more pissed off about this was Kane and not The Undertaker? Well, I don't know. Um, someone had to, like, get, you know, intense about it, and Undertaker's not there yet, I don't think. That was a good moment. Yeah. And it made sense for Kane to defend him, you know. But it seemed as though Kane was more visibly angry than Taker. Well, Taker's character isn't... He's never really showed emotion. That's true. And Kane's character's always yeah. been the angry right. one. Yeah. So it and makes sense. That's the one thing you just mentioned just a minute ago about bringing this into storyline. Yeah. I'm like 50-50 on this. Okay. it's It just happened, so then busting out the urn and having an Undertaker in my house. I even said, when we're watching, I was like, please don't say that it's Paul Bear's urns. <laughs> or no, please don't, you know, please say that it's not his, his urn, his ashes in there. Please. Uh, right. They didn't physically, they didn't actually say that, but... I'm not sure if that was implied or not. I don't know, but it, it could have been implied. But then again, it could be. It could have been like, Paul Bear's urn that he always that, used. Exactly, yeah, that's what his I was possession. Say. You know. Yeah. It, so that the, they are tying this into the storyline, but on the same time, this is I hate to say it, this is a good feel to use for the CM Punk Undertaker storyline. Mm-hmm. I hate I hate to be that advocate for WWE, but yeah, that's kind of what it is. You know, this is a, a good. Like, way to you, you, make it personal. You want to be a little bit like, okay, that was something offensive. But at the right. same time, it's like, well, maybe it wasn't. He just died. Like, yeah. it's not even a week. Yeah. And, but they had to acknowledge it somehow. Yeah. And I think because it is Undertaker and it is Paul Bear, you know, I think they had to do something with his character on TV. I, I, I more so now don't have a problem with it. I, I probably was at the time 50-50, like you're saying. Mm. Uh, but now, more so, I'm okay with it. After seeing some of the tweets from actual wrestlers, from, from people talking about it, like, I'm going to throw a name out there, Lance Storm. Mm. Lance Storm was talking about this and tweeting about it, and so was Matt Morgan, of all people. Matt Morgan. <laughs> they, they were talking about this and saying that, oh, why are all these people offended, you know, when none of these people know who Paul Bear is and, you know... That type of thing. And a lot of sentiment from wrestlers, from actual people in the industry, is that 
Paul Bear wouldn't have had it any other way. And I'm taking the word of all these other wrestlers that, that have been talking about it, that they're saying it's okay. And I don't know Paul Bear personally, right. and I, you don't. Yeah. Well, at least I don't think you do. <laughs> well, no. I mean, hell, we're calling him Paul Bear and not William Moody. Right. <laughs> After all. We're real professionals here. Yeah. So, yeah, he, if that's really what they think that he would be cool with, then I would trust their judgment more so. Right. I can see that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Whew. Whew. <laughs> Are we done talking about Paul Bear and Punk and Undertaker? Do you think that this is making the build to their match even better? Yes. Okay. Yes. I definitely think so. It's what it needed? Yes. Unfortunately, now, at a bad cost, but, you know. Right. At the same time, it's like... I am I still hold the position that we both had last week, where I'm not 100% behind this match actually happening, mostly because I don't want either guy to lose. But, like I said last week, good matches fix everything, so, and that still remains to be seen. So, mm, I don't know. I'm not 100% behind it, but it, it's making it better. Okay. All right. Let's move on. Uh, let's, let's talk about Sandow and Cody, the Rhodes Scholars. The officially uh, reunited Rhodes Scholars. Yes. Uh, they pulled a little bit of double duty tonight. Did they? Yes, and uh, pun intended. <laughs> they started off in the ring, uh, presumably going to fight the New Age Outlaws. Mm-hmm. And Which they did. It, but... They did. <laughs> but before that. Before that, apparently Sandow's been uh, looking at some of the memes that have been <laughs> online. Uh, he decided to have a Sandow knees lesson. A great segment. I loved when he was, you know, just playing off of the road dog shtick there. Right. Um, it, it was just really awesome. And then, of course, we had the real deal come out with, you know, New Age Outlaws, which, hey! Wait, d- deal came out? No, d- shut up. Oh. <laughs> you know, they had New Age Outlaws come right. out, and they did their their thing, and I don't know. I mean, are they back? Are they not back? I'm confused. I, I'm, con- you I'm know, confused. It was just, well, it was last week on the old school, was that supposed to be a one-off, and then they just got challenged, and that's it? <sighs> I don't know. I mean, I hope not. I hope that they're really back for a long haul. I was kind of wanting to see them have a match. Yeah. And, and, I mean, instead, Lester comes out, F5s both of them, stands over them, talks crap. No, Heyman talks crap. Which, I mean, I can see where it was going. I mean, it's Triple H's friends. Right, yeah. So they're talking to Triple H and it's set up for that. I'd hate for them to just be a device in the Triple H and Brock Lesnar storyline. You but know? that was what uh, Shawn Michaels was. True, but I don't know. I mean, with Shawn Michaels, it's like okay, the dude's retired, yeah. But <laughs> and they aren't retired. Well, they kind of <laughs> they're they're less retired than Shawn is because Shawn's gone on record saying, "Once I'm retired, I'm done. I'm not coming back. Whatever." These guys, these have never said that. They wrestled in TNA for a while. They wrestled on Raw. You know, they, they could be back. And I, I kind of want them to. And here's the way out that I think WWE could take is, uh, well, we didn't actually get a chance to fight the Road Scholars. So let's have a rematch on next week's Raw or something like that. So that's, they could. that's the out. But yeah. uh, maybe it's just a device. Maybe, maybe that's just wishful it. thinking. Yeah. I don't know. I, I hope they're not. And can someone t- please tell us why they edited their music? Yeah. But they don't edit when they they, they can say his name. Yeah, badass bad Billy Gunn. Gun. It's on their freaking Titan Tron. It, it says, says ass. Yeah, it says <laughs> badass. Yeah. <laughs> but they can't say ass on the theme song. Yeah. The your, one thing your that ass gets... Your better call somebody. Yeah. They don't do it. The, the, the one thing that gets everybody's attention, you know, makes everybody pop, is their the little intro to their music. Yeah. And it shouldn't, it shouldn't be a big thing. Yeah. But, but for us. It's just one tiny <laughs> ass. That's it. Yes, it's one tiny ass. Yes. <laughs> but, but it shouldn't be a big thing. Yeah. But, you know, for people like us who, who knew, who know the music, it's a big thing. It's yeah. like, that's their music. What the, what the heck? Yeah. But the fact that they can still say it, that's another thing. Yeah. I don't know. It's ridiculous. But let's, let's get back to what started this off. You know. Uh, the Rose Scholars pulling double duty. Yeah. They also had another match with uh, Sheamus and RKO. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and who won? I don't know. Whatever. 
Road Scholars fought twice. That's the point. And that's cool. Way to go. <laughs> and then uh, we had this backstage segment with Cody Rhodes mm-hmm. trying to hit on uh, Caitlyn. And it looked like it was being somewhat successful. Right. He was pulling the whole, I must ask you a question. And apparently it worked. <laughs> and they were starting to really hit it off. And Sandow shows up with the... Man, with cock blocked him, man. Jeez. Yeah, he totally cock blocked him. But... Mm. Is it technically a cock block if you show up with two other... If you show up with the Bellas? That, my friend, is the good question. I, yeah. I, I, I don't know. Is it a cock switch? Is it a cock block? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> it's like... It's, it's like, yeah, it's like <laughs> Here, don't go with Caitlyn. Have Brie. <laughs> or Nikki. I don't know which one it was. It, was it doesn't matter. Two. It doesn't matter. So, yeah, Brie and Nikki Bella are back, and they basically said, yeah, the Divas Division needs us. I would agree that the Divas Division needs people, but I don't know if the Divas Division necessarily needs the Bellas. You know? I'm not complaining. Why? Well, I know you're not complaining. <laughs> but see, you're you're a mark for the Bellas, but not because of their in ring ability. You're a mark for the Bellas just because they're hot. You say that like it's a bad thing. What? <laughs> well, it kind of is. I, I don't know. Maybe... You gotta respect them for their ability. I mean, it's great to have a you know eye candy around, but if they can't wrestle. They can't wrestle. <laughs> What's your argument? <laughs> My argument is that it's what? because they're not because they're not good wrestlers. Yeah, they're not great wrestlers. Eh. Okay, it's not like the diva division matters. But that's why it doesn't matter because they have just eye candy and they don't have super right. So what difference does it make now that they're here? It doesn't. Let them have the fun. <laughs> Let them come with their little... You little... just want to see the Bellas, and that's it. <laughs> Goddamn right, I do. <laughs> <sighs> I'm saying, why can't we have beautiful people that can actually wrestle? Why can't we have beautiful divas that can wrestle at the same time? Um, Because it's not TNA. Did you just pay TNA a compliment? Oh, I think I did. Oh, well, there you go. <laughs> and it's on record, too. Huzzah. Okay. <laughs> That's the end of that. So they pulled double duty in the ring, and then I will say I'll I'll give the Bellas credit. They're being smart. Come back during WrestleMania season, get that big paycheck. That's true. Of all the times of year to come back, how about that? Yeah. Must have been a coincidence. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> had to have been. They weren't thinking about that at all. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so we're moving on from something that makes you really happy to something that just pissed me the f off. WTF moment? No, it kind of pissed me off too. Uh, oh, um, you know what I'm getting at? Oh yeah. Okay, uh, Ryback versus Mark Henry advertised as being on SmackDown? WTF! Yeah, before that was announced, we were even talking about, this is a, this is kind of a good build for a WrestleMania match. Yeah. You know, they've been kind of bumping into each other and, yeah. you know, kind of a Mark Henry's down. come out and now he's looking at his match. Yeah, you know, now we're and, getting somewhere. And then they've both just like yeah. gang banged on Drew, and Drew McIntyre there. Yeah. Yeah, so it's like, okay, cool, this is, this is going somewhere. All right, mm-hmm. this, this is, I, I'm digging it. And then, oh yeah, on SmackDown. What? <laughs> so why would you, what, what the, what the fear? <laughs> oh man, it made me so freaking angry. So angry. I think that came across really well on the, uh, <laughs> on the microphone there. <laughs> I bet it did. <laughs> what are they thinking? Uh, well, apparently that WrestleMania doesn't matter. I guess so. Yeah. Cause that's a, that's a good, you know, that's not even your lower mid card. You know, that's Ryback, who's been your kind of upper mid-card monster yeah. face against Mark Henry, former heavyweight champion, monster heel, upper mid-card yeah, heel. Yeah, uh, bordering on legendary status now, because yeah. he's been around for so long. Right, yeah. That kind of seems like a TNA move. Yeah. You know, you're starting yeah. to build something, it's right before a big-ass pay-per-view, uh, give it away on free TV. Yeah. What? What? I mean, are they, are they, maybe they're gonna do like a tease of a match. And that's exactly what I was about to get at. Yeah. Uh, I had, after I tweeted my anger about <laughs> yeah, that. It was in all caps, damn it. Yeah, I, I all caps it and I pressed the buttons down really hard. You don't do all caps unless you're really mad. Yeah. Cause um, you're yelling. <laughs> I, I received prompt responses on Twitter from several different people saying that Exactly what you said. Well, it'll probably be some sort of tease, maybe a DQ thing, smoke and mirrors, something to set up a WrestleMania match. But why match. even, but in your defense, why even do that in the first place? True. Let it just build naturally. Don't have him, don't force it. 
Like yeah. have him in the ring and do some kind of smalls or whatever, and then have him redo the rematch. Yeah. At Mania. Another rematch yeah. at Mania. Yeah. Like, have the first match at Mania. Yeah. Why... Why have some sort of cluster, like you said, some sort of schmoz on SmackDown to set up uh, a, a, a... That's ridiculous. I'm thinking on SmackDown, if they even get into the ring together, is it going to be... They're just going to be beating the crap out of each other. Maybe they hit a ref. The referee DQs them. Or, or maybe some, one of them will attack the other before the match and... Yeah, know, maybe. Incapacitates them or something. I don't know. I would hope so. Like, that's the best case scenario. I would... Now. The best case scenario... Out of the whole thing, would never have a match on SmackDown at all. Like you said, let it build, let it simmer until yeah. let him keep running to the hallways. You know, as as one's coming out, one's leaving, type thing. And then yeah. doing a stare down. Let that go for a little while. Yeah, maybe put him uh, where Mark Henry's fighting some guy. Or well, no, this will probably actually work the other way around. Ryback's fighting some guy, and you put Mark Henry at the commentator booth. You know, like that old type thing, you know? Oh, Mark Henry's good on the commentator. Oh, Remember that? Is. Oh, that was great. Mark Henry's great on the commentator. Yeah. Right back, eh, not so much. That's yeah. why I had to switch it there <laughs> at the end. But do, do some of that kind of stuff. I mean, you got you got four weeks. Ooh, I know? got another one. Um, Mark Henry, you know, lately he's been coming out to squashing jobber, you know, not jobbers, but, you know. Lower card superstar guys. Superstar guys. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> NXT guys. And after the match is over, he just yells out, that's what I do. <laughs> you know that's cool that's a good little slogan to put on a t-shirt that's what I do yeah what he needs to do like if he does that one more time just get on the mic and say Ryback I see you've been staring you know I see you've been you know ch- you know watching my match you know watching me or whatever you know that's a great Mark Henry impersonation shut up and <laughs> so you know what I'm saying and just um, you know have it to where he acknowledges or kind of ch- yeah. informally challenges uh, Ryback yeah, you know. you, you you never face the world's strongest man, something like that. You See, I was really trying to impersonate whatever. his voice, yeah, because I knew I couldn't do it. You just, <laughs> I don't know what that was. Don't, don't do that again. But uh, yeah, you know what I'm saying. Just you know, maybe call him out, but not just set up a match on SmackDown. Oh, by the way, on SmackDown, uh, Mark Henry and uh, Ryback. Yeah, that. Oh, because everybody everybody watches SmackDown, right? Oh, <laughs> it's the Rock Show after all. Oh, okay. Well, it's a good thing he's here all the time. Yes. <laughs> all right. Uh, let's move on to something interesting that we kind of alluded to earlier in, in the show. Something that they're doing with the Intercontinental title. <laughs> Where um, apparently it was just kind of hot shot it there. Um, oh. That Miz and Jericho are going to fight for number one contender for uh, the IC title. But they didn't say when. <laughs> and they didn't say number one contender for IC title at WrestleMania. They just said number one contender no, for IC did. title. They did? Yeah. Are you sure? Yeah. They said the, the winner of this match faces the ch- the champion next week on Raw. We even said that. We were talking about it. Yeah. Next week on Raw. Not at Mania. Right. That, that, that's that's what I'm getting at. It's okay. not at Mania. Right. It's not at Mania. Yeah. So, again, another... WTF. Yeah. Another WTF with a, a match that should be being built to WrestleMania right. that's going to be on Raw. You know? Like, that's... Do you... If that does... If that does get formed as, as a match... Uh, the triple threat? Yeah. D- would you be okay with that match? I'd be okay with it if it happens at Mania. Not mm-hmm. if it happens at Raw next week. Like, uh, what I think should happen, since it was kind of a shenanigans ending, mm-hmm. instead of saying, okay, well, next this next week, since both of you guys lost, we'll just have a triple threat, bam, right there at the end. Like, I hope that it's like, oh, uh, well, we can't decide who, whatever, so we're going to and like kind of drag it out a little bit. Like and maybe have like, matches like every week, you know, like every week, uh, something, some kind of shenanigans ending or whatever, you know, some something happens within the match every week, and then it it just so happens the, the week before WrestleMania is okay. Well, we can't have this match now, so let's do it at Mania. <sighs> yeah, but then again, that's like booking yeah. the Intercontinental Title match for WrestleMania the week of or the week before WrestleMania. Man, it's the Intercontinental Title. Just book that shit now. Just say, <laughs> hey, it's gonna be at Mania. Yeah. Can can we talk about the segment for a second? Yeah. The whole segment itself, because this was a big, for me, it was uh, another WTF moment. Okay, go ahead. Brad Maddox uh, comes out. Right. And Maddox. Don't you start. <laughs> um, his, we've seen him on camera for a while now. We get his mannerisms, right? Yeah. The way he talks, you know, it's the slow... 
I'm good at talking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, I'm, you know, I don't really know what I'm talking about. So, you know, when you're just talking about you, you, you fight him, you know, yeah. you know, stuff like that, you know, he doesn't really know what the hell he's talking about. He's talking about going to commercial breaks, you know, when they don't need to go on a commercial break, you know, stuff like that. Yeah. Which works on commentary. But when he's doing this segment, this was really strange for me because, and this isn't the first time that WWE has done this, where there's a segment going on and the commentators are laughing at it. Yeah. They're, they're outright saying, this is horrible. Cole wouldn't shut the hell up. He wouldn't. And it's our job as fans to say, this is shit. Yeah. Let us say that. Yeah. Don't have your own employees who are presenting the show on television say, this is horrible. Yeah. You know? It's like, it's coming across as, why are you even doing this? This is shit. Yeah, like, at the end of it, Cole said, oh, this is probably the worst segment we've ever had. When they couldn't stop laughing. Yeah, like, dude, first off, it's probably not that bad. (laughs) We've seen tons worse. Yeah, yeah, it wasn't that bad, and he was kind of doing his thing. He's kind of being bad on purpose. Kind of That's his character, that's what I'm saying, yeah. Mike Adam Lee type thing, you know? Where, well, with Mike Adam Lee, he wasn't bad on purpose. Like, he was just bad. Yeah. And, then, and then he was bad on purpose. But anyway, I, I digress. Uh, I, I kind of get what they're doing with Maddox. You know, just... Maddox. Whatever. Uh, so <laughs> I, I kind of... I kind of feel it. You know, I'm kind of going going with the flow on this one. Are you talking and, about and his character? Yes. Not what the commentators were doing. Not what the okay. commentators were doing. Like, that's the part I disagree with. Like, why are you calling it bad? Like, that's his thing. And it's kind of funny. Just let him roll with it. And I think people in the arena that were just listening to Maddox talk and didn't hear the commentary from Cole, they probably had a way different experience than we did. Like, oh, yeah, this guy's kind of... Some of the stuff we couldn't hear what yeah. Maddox was saying because of Cole. Because of Cole. Yeah. yeah. WTF. It, it's, like I said, this isn't the first time that they've done this, where they will outright say, this is bad. Yeah. It's one thing when Cole was a heel. Yes. That made sense. Yes. Cole's not a heel anymore. Right. He shouldn't be downgrading their own company. I, I mean, it wasn't just Cole. It was uh, Lawler, too. He was laughing at it, too. Yeah. But he was, he wasn't saying it was bad. He was just laughing. Yeah. Was he laughing with Maddox, or was he laughing? I think he was more laughing with Cole. Yeah. 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 They should never do that. Yeah. The, the commentator should be getting everybody over. Yeah. You know? That's just... Well, I mean, maybe in this respect, they think they're trying to get him heat. Which, I don't know. But they weren't saying he's bad. They were saying I mean, this, this whole segment, segment was bad. bad. Which includes the highlight reel and Jericho right. and Miz and, and Barrett. And I think I think some of that was directed a little bit towards them. But I mean, I think most of it was directed towards Maddox. But right. yeah, it kind of made everything seem bad. Clearly something happened during that segment. Because Jericho made that little comment. Hey, look, I made the Jeritron disappear magically. You yeah, know, what what happened? Something happened. I wasn't paying attention before that. Because we were talking about the Jeritron. <laughs> yeah, we were just, just by coincidence. Yeah. yeah, and then when they came back, hey, I made it disappear. I was like, was it there? <laughs> yeah. And so I, I don't know if something happened during that segment during these clips. Yeah. Um, which that's one thing that everybody was saying they didn't, couldn't stand about the show was they kept plugging all these movies that they're doing. Oh, I know. You know that goes without saying. We don't need to talk about that because that's it's it's it was shit. Yeah. But anyway, <laughs> but the whole segment in general was just for me is what the you know WTF just because of Cole. Yeah. You know we've seen bad segments before. Like I said, let the fans say. This is a bad segment. You know, you shouldn't be telling us, you know, what's bad or not. Yeah. That's me. That's my soapbox. Okay. I'm okay. Done. I'm done. <laughs> uh, let's finally move on to another match of the week candidate. Oh, God. I'm not done yet. I'm getting tired, man. I think, I think this is the final oh, match of the Jesus. week candidate. Whatever. That's the match of the week. Fuck it. <laughs> <laughs> the final match of the week candidate uh, from Raw, d Bry versus Ziggler. And I think this might be the first time that we've had... One superstar being match of the week twice for two different matches. But hey, Ziggler, so hey. Yeah, it's Ziggler. I, I don't mind. D. Bryer versus Ziggler, great stuff, great match. And hey, guess what? Ziggler got a win. Yeah. <laughs> right after I was, right after I was joking about how he's not going to win. Yeah. But then I said, no, wait, I, I did say, uh, he's not fighting the world champ, so he might have a chance of winning. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> True. Well, he's a former world champ, I guess. You know, he's right. a tag team champ. Yeah. Uh, great match. I mean, uh, Brian with D. Bry was doing, you know, some of his classic stuff where working the arm and mm-hmm. then gets him mm-hmm. on the ground and bends Just the arm back and stomps him. on it. You know, mm-hmm. that, that was some great stuff. Uh, I believe we saw a Mexican surfboard. I always pop for that. That always mm-hmm. makes a match great. So, uh, I, definite match of the week candidate right there. Everything was crisp, clean, fast paced. Everything was on point in that match. 
now that we have all of our match of the week candidates, uh, what would you say is match of the week? You know what? The tag team match from Impact, uh, the uh, lockdown pay per view. So you're agreeing with me? Was that what you said? Yeah, that is what God I said. Damn it. Um, okay, hold on. I, <laughs> no, you can't take it back. <sighs> no, yeah, I can. Yeah. Just because you agree with me doesn't mean you can take it back. Um, Ziggler and Debray. Really? <laughs> okay, fine. <laughs> Listeners, what do you think? Uh, what do you think should have been match of the week? Uh, those are our four candidates. SmackDown, Del Rio versus Ziggler. Raw, Debray versus Ziggler. Uh, Lockdown, the triple threat, uh, Christian York versus Ema Ion versus Kenny King. Or uh, the triple threat tag match between the Mexicans, Bad Influence, and Aries and Rude. All right. There you go. So that's that. Tweet away, people. Tweet away. At H Wrestling Radio. I think that's all that we have for now for the big uh, <laughs> two, uh, WWE and TNA. You, you uh, want to go ahead and go on into our interview with our special guest? Oh, yes. <laughs> yes, we have that too. Here we go. All right. Uh, we're going to go ahead and bring on Stash in here. Uh, hold tight, folks. 